Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, bad karma for GoPro, market report for avionics sales shows a decline, wounded veteran will learn to fly. I'm Brie Cross, it's November 11th, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. The debut of the GoPro Karma drone last month was received with excitement by those looking forward to the long-promised small UAS, and it brought hopes to the company to provide some economic benefit to their bottom line. While all appeared well at first, now GoPro has announced the recall of the approximately 2,500 Karma drones purchased by consumers since October 23rd. The recall was announced after GoPro discovered that in a very small number of cases, Karma units lost power during operation. According to the company, owners of Karma can return their units to GoPro or their place of purchase for a full refund. Replacement units are not being offered. GoPro says they plan to resume shipment of Karma as soon as the issue is resolved. The Aircraft Electronics Association has released its third quarter 2016 avionics market report, and the report indicates a continued decline in avionics sales. In the first nine months of the year, total worldwide business and general aviation avionics sales amounted to more than $1.6 billion, which represents a 6.2% decrease in year-over-year -year sales compared to the first nine months in 2015. Sales during the third quarter months of July, August, and September showed a decrease of 5.7% when compared to the 2015 third quarter sales. During the first nine months of this year, 53.2% of the sales came from avionics equipment installed by airframe manufacturers during original production, and avionics equipment installed after original production amounted to 46.8% of the sales. AA President Paula Dirk said in part, quote, It is disappointing that total worldwide sales have decreased in each of the first three quarters of the current year compared to those same time frames one year ago. Dirks added that the U.S. market has seen the equipage pace pick up slightly for avionics installations to meet the FAA's ADSB out mandate. After the break, Lockheed Martin partners with Able Flight. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. A wounded veteran has been selected as the first recipient of the new Lockheed Martin Able Flight Scholarship. Retired Army Captain Ferris Butler of Chester, Maryland, sustained severe lower leg injuries in Iraq in 2006 when struck by an IED. Butler, a double amputee, is the recipient of the Purple Heart, Bronze Star, and Meritorious Service Medal. After successful completion of Able Flight's six-week flight school held at Purdue University's Department of Aviation Technology, Butler will earn his pilot's license and receive his wings at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2017. Captain Butler said in part, quote, Lockheed Martin's support for the Able Flight program sets an important example of standing behind our military service members both in and out of uniform. It is very fitting that a firm that started in the aviation industry more than 100 years ago is now supporting veterans as they earn their very own pilot's wings. We at ANN congratulate Captain Butler. It is fitting to remember that today is Veterans Day, and we thank him and all veterans for their selfless service to our country. We look forward to meeting Captain Butler at AirVenture. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and editor in chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. Bob Hoover's friends are holding a memorial service in his honor in Clay Lacey Aviation's hangar at Van Nuys Airport in Van Nuys, California on November 18th. 
Jim Campbell and the a and video crew will be there to bring the event to you as it occurs. And Jim is here to tell you more about it. Here is this week's Barnstorming. Thanks, Bree, and hi, folks. Well, as we sit here facing each other, we've got a week to go before the Bob Hoover Memorial Celebration on November 18th at the Clay Lacey Aviation Facility in Van Nuys, California. For those of you who can be there, we strongly recommend that you do so. Details are on our website at aero-news.net, and there will be significantly more information over the next few days. Monday, we will have final details of all of our live streaming activities, of which there is a significant amount of information. Basically, though, everything on the live stream will be hosted primarily, but not solely, at www.letbobfly.net slash live. Let Bob Fly is our uh, main site for the upcoming Bob Hoover documentary that he asked us to undertake last year regarding his fight with the FAA in the 1990s and changes that he feels are still necessary if pilots are going to get their respect and rights due to them as American citizens by the FAA, the NTSB, and all the associated governmental agencies as we go forward. This was something that Bob felt very important about, and I assure you we're pursuing that aggressively with great heart and with great faith that Bob's direction will lead us to a great result. I have to tell you, this is one of the most complex undertakings we've ever taken on because we've had very little time. It's been on the, uh, on the tail end of three events in 10 days between Redbird and MBAA and DeLand. We're exhausted, uh, but in a really good way because we're doing great work on behalf of a phenomenal American. At the same time, there's been some things that have been happening behind the scenes because this is a huge event. It's very costly. We're ponying up a good part of this ourselves. And we'll be talking about this a little bit later on, but I have to tell you that we've been particularly touched by a call from Hal Shivers at Sporties and Sporties Foundation, who is helping with this in a really great way. Why? Because there's only one Bob Hoover, he says. Hasn't asked for anything, just wants to help. Wow. Um, my wife says it's the first time she's seen me speechless. Additionally, we're getting tremendous help from Mark Scheuer and the people of PS Engineering. There are others involved. We'll be announcing that shortly. I can't tell you how phenomenally great we feel because of the faith placed in us, the love for Bob, and giving us the ability to share this with an aviation community that wants to celebrate the life of a great American and a dear friend. We'll talk to you in a couple of days. We'll see you next week. For the Aero News Network, Airborne, and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. Still amazed at being a friend of Bob's. After these messages, Colleen Barrett receives the 2016 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The National Aeronautic Association announced that Colleen Barrett, President Emeritus of Southwest Airlines, is a recipient of the 2016 Wright Brothers Memorial Trophy. Known as the Queen of Hearts, she remains the only woman to serve as president of a major U.S. airline.
The 416th Flight Test Squadron at Edwards Air Force Base performs weapons testing for other countries. A team of U.S. Air Force engineers and pilots are working with the Norwegian government in testing the Joint Strike missile on the F-35 fighter. CAE and Ryanair celebrate the success of CAE's initial type-rated training program for the European airline. They have trained 2,000 Ryanair cadet at CAE's training center in Amsterdam to support the needs of the airline for more pilots in Europe. The FAA has denied permission for the extension of a road adjacent to the Newport News Williamsburg International Airport in Virginia. The FAA said they had serious concerns about the proposed runway negatively impacting the runway's protection zone. An airworthiness directive has been issued for all Diamond Aircraft Model DA-40 and G airplanes. A concern exists for a possible engine failure caused by a manufacturing quality deficiency and a batch of V-clamps that could cause the V-clamp to crack and fail. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has issued a supplemental type certificate to Genesis Aerosystems for the installation of its helicopter stability augmentation system, known as HeliSAS, and their two-axis autopilot aboard Airbus EC-120 Colibri light turbine helicopters. Jamie Lester, the director of sales and marketing for Genesis Aerosystems, said in part, quote, The HeliSAS and autopilot has been created to reduce pilot workload, especially in light to mid-sized piston and turbine helicopters that are primarily operated as single-pilot aircraft. The HeliSAS Autopilot and Stability Augmentation System for the EC-120 is engaged throughout all phases of flight, from startup to shutdown. It provides automatic recovery to near-level flight attitudes at all airspeeds and has complete two-axis autopilot functionality. Lester said the company is currently accepting orders for shipment in early next month. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday.